This video tutorial will help you complete research activity number five, MLA citation. In research activity number four, you gathered information about a web resource and wrote a paragraph about that web resource, what information it included and how you intend to use it. Now let's take an eye toward citing the resource. In your research project, you must cite all resources that you use. This is a way to show what you know and what you learned from research. This is about research honesty. So in research activity number five, you'll learn about how to use MLA format to cite resources. It is sometimes challenging for students to master these rules. However, the rules are fairly clear and rigid. So follow step by step each rule and you should do fine. First, for the activity, choose a web resource for your project. You may use the same re web resource that you used for research activity number four. And in this model example, you will see that I have done that. So that means that I have picked my history.com topics Cold War. So let's look at that again. This is my encyclopedia-like entry on the Cold War. We've been through this in research activity number four. So in my assignment, I must complete the blanks for citation information. These are the blanks. Author, major title, minor title, publisher, date of publication, and type of resource. This isn't all that difficult, even though it can seem kind of confusing at first. The author should be fairly clear. Major title and minor title may be a little bit confusing. Publisher should be clear. Date of publication should be clear. However, sometimes students have trouble finding it and the type of resource is very clear. So let's take a look at how I've completed this for my history.com web resource. First, I say none for author. Why? As I look at my Cold War entry, I see no author listed underneath the title. I also see no author listed at the bottom of the entry. I scroll around a little bit more, looking for an author's name, and I don't see an author's name. Therefore, this entry has no listed author, and I will list none. MLA format will allow for a blank where author should be. My major title is the title of the website itself. And what is the title of this website? How do I know? It should be up here toward the top in the banner. History.com's title is actually history. And if I wasn't sure what the title was, I could go to the home page. So if your page does not include a major title for the website, and that is the overall website, not the individual web page, try going to the home page. The home page will show that title right here. So my major title is history, the title of the website overall. My minor title is the title of this individual page. History contains a number of individual pages. I can't even imagine how many pages might be contained in the History Channel's website. Now I'm naming this individual page with my minor title. It's called Cold War, not the Cold War and nothing else besides Cold War, capital C, capital W. So I enter Cold War. Notice the difference in formatting. My major title is italicized. My minor title is quoted. Be sure to format them differently. That shows the reader which is the minor title and which is the major title. My publisher is A&E Television Networks. How do I find that? It's fairly simple to find a publisher. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Look for a copyright date. Right next to the copyright date, you should find a publisher. In this case, it's A&E Television Networks. If you're having trouble finding that, of course, remember that you can always go back to the main page, scroll down to the bottom, and you should be able to find it. If you're having trouble finding it, look for a Contact Us or About Us link. In that place, you should find the name of the publisher. If you can't find it immediately, some poking around should help you find it. My date of publication is 2013. Now, why did I pick that? Well, let's go back. I look for a specific month, day, and year when I'm looking for a publication date. Where would I find it? In the same sort of place where I would find an author. Somewhere up here toward the top, maybe near the title, or perhaps at the bottom. 
I look for months, dates, years. I'm not seeing anything. And what am I talking about when I talk about looking for that? Well, let's talk about CNN.com, a regular news resource. What if I pull up this story? As I pull up this story, I can see right here near the title a month, day, and year. Very specific. In fact, they even list the time of day. If that were the case, then I would list December 7, 2013. The Cold War entry does not contain that sort of date. So what do I do? I use the most recent date I can find. And that's the date right next to the publisher. 2013 seems to be the most recent date. So I list 2013. Always look for a specific date if you can find it. My type of, web re type of resource is a web page. And that's fairly easy to understand. You might have another type of resource, like a book or a magazine, perhaps even an email or a tweet. But right now we're dealing with a simple web page. These are the important pieces of information for my web citation, and it's not that complex. If you have all these pieces of information, you have what's ready to write the MLA formatted entry. Let's take a look at that entry. All of these pieces of information should be formatted in a single entry like this. This will appear in your Works Cited page at the end of your research report. MLA calls for a specific order of information in these entries. The first piece of information is the author. I would have placed the author right here. Actually, I would have placed the author with last name first, and then first name last, and then a period and a space. If you have an author, include it right there. Last name, and then first name, and then period. I don't have one, so I don't start with it. I simply start with my minor title. Minor title is first, Cold War. Then my major title, History. Then my publisher, A&E Television Networks. This should be a comma. A comma between my publisher and the date of publication. A period here. The word web for web page resource. A period, and then the date that I found it. When I originally did this research, I found it on June 19th, 2013. And MLA calls for me to enter the number first, then the month, then the year, ended by a period. I'll go over that order again. Author, minor title, major title, publisher, date of publication, type of resource, and then date of, um, date of finding. Actually, it's date of access, technically, according to MLA. Following this format will produce a single MLA formatted entry. Let's go over one more rule, the rule of punctuation. Every piece of information in this web entry should be separated from another by a period. You'll notice the periods between the pieces of information. One exception it is the publisher to the publication date. These two pieces of information are linked pretty clearly, so a comma is required instead of a period. We don't want to separate them quite so much. So a comma here, periods everywhere else. And don't forget, periods go inside quotation marks. I've thrown a lot of rules at you, but each rule is fairly clear and repeats from entry to entry. Once you master writing a web resource entry, you can do it for any web resource fairly quickly poke around on the website a little bit, and be sure to follow the MLA format rules. You can see here, with the MLA entry rules bullets, some recommendations for what you should remember when you are writing this entry. Use that information. Here is your student work space. Include your web resource link, answer the questions, and then write your MLA formatted entry. Yours should look like mine right here. Be sure to follow it clearly, and you can write an MLA formatted entry that is sufficient for junior high, high school, and even college.